Every day with Robin, George, and Michael. That's how. From Midland, Odessa, and Big Spring, this is ABC Big 2 News at 10. Now at 10, we start with the search for answers tonight in the horrific killings of four men in New Mexico. Police now say all four murders may be connected. All four of the victims were Muslim. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday night. I'm Rob Tuke. Now tonight, Governor Grisham is calling the killings targeted. The most recent killing happened right before the weekend on Friday. The FBI and U.S. Marshals are now investigating, and ABC's Alex Perche leads us off tonight with this report. Tonight, a tight-knit Muslim community in Albuquerque is shaken as authorities investigate a possible link between the fatal shootings of four Muslim men. This is a, a really a, a surreal time for us. Um, and we're, we're in fear of the safety of our children, our families. The FBI and U.S. Attorney's Office now assisting the Albuquerque police after a young man was shot to death Friday, the third in two weeks. That man not yet identified, but authorities say he was from South Asia. The Islamic Center for New Mexico putting out these images of the men asking for the public's help. On Monday, 27-year-old Muhammad Afzal Hussein was killed, his family telling our affiliate KOAT he was gunned down less than a block from their house. Whenever I look out of the window, I say, oh, this is the place my brother got shot. So even I couldn't come out of my apartment. 41-year-old Aftab Hussein was killed on July 26th. Both men were Muslim and from Pakistan. In all three cases, police say the men were ambushed with no warning. Tonight, the Islamic Center for New Mexico telling ABC News Mohammed Afzal Hussein, Aftab Hussein, and Friday's victims were all regulars there. Authorities are now looking into whether those murders are connected to the November 2021 killing of Mohammed Ahmadi, who is a native of Afghanistan. There are several things in common with all four of the homicides, and we're digging back and looking at any other crime that might fit this, a similar pattern. Tonight, President Biden saying in a tweet, I am angered and saddened by the horrific killings of four Muslim men in Albuquerque, adding these hateful attacks have no place in America. That was Alex Perche reporting. Now tonight, investigators say they have a vehicle of interest. It's a dark silver Volkswagen Jetta sedan with tinted windows. And we have an update tonight about the manhunt for a quadruple murder suspect spanning multiple states. 39-year-old Stephen Alexander Marlowe was arrested in Lawrence, Kansas late last night. Marlowe was wanted for the murders of four people in Dayton, Ohio last week. An older couple, as well as a mother and her 15-year-old daughter, were found shot to death at multiple crime scenes. A motive is still unclear. And much closer to home, developing tonight, the Department of Public Safety is investigating a deadly crash in Nectar County. DPS said there was a deadly crash involving multiple vehicles on University Boulevard and Vega Avenue today. The crash happened this afternoon around 345. University Boulevard was closed down as troopers worked the scene, but details of the accident and details of who was involved are still limited at this hour. And in Brewster County, deputies arrested three people south of Alpine. The sheriff's office said it got a suspicious person's call and found these three men on private property. All three men are from Mexico and are being processed for deportation. Across Texas, four people are dead, including two children, after a three-vehicle crash in Galveston. Police say a suspected drunk driver did not stop at a stop sign, hitting a truck in an intersection which hit a golf cart. The chain reaction crash killed four people in the golf cart. Another adult and child who were sitting in that cart are still in the hospital tonight. Now the suspect can be seen here during a sobriety test. Police arrested 45-year-old Miguel Espinoza of Rosenberg. Tonight he is being charged with four counts of intoxication manslaughter. Espinoza is being held on a $400,000 bond. Also across Texas, the children of Uvalde will be heading back to school in less than a month. Some families are feeling apprehensive after the last year ended in tragedy. But several groups in Uvalde want to help the community feel more ready for what's on the horizon. ABC's, ABC's Lee Waldman reports. Dancing, laughter, smiles, all fill the El Progreso Library. Joy and pain can't live in the same heart. 
So we have to balance that, that we can have those moments of laughter and happiness, but then on the, verse, on the opposite side of that, we acknowledge there are times that we do have to address the sadness, but it's not all sad. We just learn how to manage both. Dr. Yvonne Clark, director of It's Okay to Cry Children and Adolescent Grief Center outside of Houston, worked to organize this event to help kids and their parents address their feelings ahead of a new school year. Having this kind of a fun activity, but still supporting emotional distress, the sadness, and the, um, the heartache and pain that they've experienced would be a good way to kind of be that catalyst to get ready to go back to school. Kids did play therapy, got free school supplies, and met superheroes. Outside, spirit cookers are serving up smiles. So many of them have such a big heart. I mean, I, I see that the sad part about it, but I've seen the positive today from some of these families that lost family members, and they said, Thank you so much for coming and be a part of this. Kimberly Morgan and Eddie Garcia brought these portraits of the 21 victims from Pflugerville she created. Garcia went to Rob when he was younger. The connection is huge. Um, it was tough. It still is. I um, don't know any of them. But the connection hurts. Processing that pain with the moments of joy is what this is all about. And that was Lee Waldman reporting. Taking a live look now from our tower camera in Odessa, just outside our studio, traffic on I-20 appears light. It's been a fine day outside and mostly sunny, but there were some clouds and scattered showers in parts of the basin. Joining us now with a check in our forecast is ABC Big 2's Bridget Sarpong. Hi, Bridget. Hi, Rob, and I'm excited because we sort of kind of put the sun in Sunday for today with highs sitting at, in the 90s at 97 degrees, one degree warmer than our average in August, sitting at 96 degrees. You know, a hot day in the area, but not as hot as we were back in 1964 when we sat in our triple digits, sitting at 104 degrees. I'll have more of this new week's forecast later on the show. Back over to you, Rob. Thank you, Bridget. Now taking a live look now from Capitol Hill. After painstaking negotiations, the Senate passed the Democrats' $750 billion health care tax and climate bill this afternoon. The final party line vote was 5150 with Vice President Kamala Harris breaking the tie. Now the sweeping bill named the Inflation Reduction Act would represent the largest climate investment in U.S. history. It would also make major changes to health policy by giving Medicare the power for the first time to negotiate the prices of certain prescription drugs and extending expiring health care subsidies for three years. The legislation would reduce the deficit and will be paid for through new taxes, including a 15% minimum tax on large corporations and a 1% tax on stock buybacks. The Democrat-controlled House, which is expected to take up the legislation on Friday, must approve the bill before Biden can sign it into law. And tonight, a second bus full of migrant families has arrived in New York City from Texas. New York's Mayor Eric Adams greeted the bus, which was sent by Governor Greg Abbott. The city is accepting the migrants, but it's also asking for federal help. Meantime, Governor Abbott has threatened to send more people north. Here's ABC's Phil Lipoff. New York City home tonight to a second busload of migrants sent by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. <laughs> The first bus arriving Friday carrying 50 migrants, most from Central and South America. The second this morning with 40 people on board, 14 of them getting off. New York City Mayor Eric Adams there to welcome them and offer assistance. This is horrific when you think about what uh, the governor uh, is doing, the governor of Texas. Uh, after a month of traveling across the border, placing on the bus with no direction. Taxi drivers lined up with welcome signs, offering free rides to many with just the clothes on their backs. Governor Abbott says he is sending undocumented immigrants to New York and Washington, D.C. to protest what he calls the Biden administration's open borders policy, saying to an audience of conservatives this week. I got one thing to tell you and to tell them. There are more buses on the way as we gather at this conference today. 
And that was Phil Lipoff reporting. Governor Abbott says he will continue to send migrants to the nation's capital and to New York. The governor said he is trying to give his border towns some relief. But immigration advocates say he is using undocumented immigrants as political pawns. And well, friends, we're slowly cooling down in the base, and after near average temperatures, how fast will temperatures increase for the first day of school? I'll have that answer after the break. And coming up, the Astros and Rangers each had chances to win their series this weekend. Highlights from the Diamond coming up in sports. And up next, we surprise a local hometown hero for her service to our community. We'll be right back. I'm Bob Mills and I suffer from scoliosis. And after my back surgery, the only mattress that would help me sleep is the new patented Heirloom mattress. With its patented micro-touch coil, inspired by the medical industry, it relieves those restless nights. If you suffer with back issues, I can't recommend enough the new patented Heirloom mattress. Another exclusive at the newly remodeled Bob Mills Sleep Spa. Now, let's get you out of pain. Chris Cuomo, welcome to the show. Let's get after it, Let's Danny. do it. You ask what you want. How is it different being Chris Cuomo the last eight months than it was in 2020? I respect that you ask the questions. I want to find a way to help people. I'm going to come to this nation, and I want to build something special here. I think we need insurgent media. I think we need outlets that aren't fringe and just trying to fill their pockets. I'm going to go where the news is, and I'm going to try very hard to be fair. Moving forward with node-positive breast cancer is overwhelming, but I never just found my way. I made it and did all I could to prevent recurrence. Fresenio reduces the risk of recurrence of HR-positive, HER2-negative, node-positive early breast cancer with a high chance of returning, as determined by your doctor when added to hormone therapy. Hormone therapy works outside the cell, while Fresenio works inside to help stop the growth of cancer cells. Diarrhea is common, may be severe, or cause dehydration or infection. At the first sign, call your doctor, start an antidiarrheal, and drink fluids. Before taking Fresenio, tell your doctor about any fever, chills, or other signs of infection. Fresenio may cause low white blood cell counts, which may cause serious infection that can lead to death. Life-threatening lung inflammation can occur. Tell your doctor about any new or worsening trouble breathing, cough, or chest pain. Serious liver problems can happen. Symptoms include fatigue, appetite loss, stomach pain, and bleeding or bruising. Blood clots that can lead to death have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have pain or swelling in your arms or legs, shortness of breath, chest pain, and rapid breathing or heart rate, or if you are nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. I'm making my own way forward. Ask your doctor about everyday Versenio. At Priority ER Care, our luxurious setting is run by dual board certified emergency and family medicine physicians. We treat our patients like family. At Priority ER Care, we've seen it all, we do it fast. Oh, allergy sufferers. Bedtime means it's time to take Zizol. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin, and on first dose, provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. Watch ABC Big 2 News weeknights at 5, 6, and 10. Your local weather authority forecast. Well, happy Sunday. It's slowly coming to a close because the sun has left us. Right now, taking a look at our Midland Sky Tower camera. Some really, you know, clear driving conditions. A little bit of some clouds in the skies. We did see those same clouds earlier today. But for the most part, you know, we are still pretty warm as earlier. Thanks to Roost by Nicholas. Now, the one thing we can't feel on this camera is how hot it got for today. And we actually made it all the way up to 97 degrees, usually around this time in August. We're definitely used to 96 degree temperatures, so one degree warmer. Now, the one thing is that, you know, a hot day, but not as hot as how we were back in 1964 when we sat in our triple digits at 104 degrees. Taking a look at our lows, we came in pretty even, sitting at 73 for today on average in August. We're definitely used to 73 degree temperatures, so super exciting. Currently in this moment, we are cooling down just a little bit, sitting at 85 degrees. Our humidity is at 23 percent dew point 46 our winds are pretty calm traveling south southeast at nine miles per hour and that sunset did happen around 8 40 p.m now with the sun has gone down we still are a little bit you know warmer three degrees warmer in the midland odessa area two degrees warmer in big spring there are some areas that are cooling down in seminal two degrees cooler along with hobbs van horn marfa one degree cooler along with pecos and wink along with snyder now tomorrow is going to be the first day of school for many of the kids 
kids. And we're going to start it off at 74 degrees, a very muggy kind of start. And by the time you're coming home, we will be sitting at 93 degrees for a very warm afternoon. Now, temperatures currently in this moment are sitting in their upper 80s, but we are going to start cooling on down as we continue on with our evening. And then by the time we get into Monday, 4 a.m., that's when we're back in our 70s at 78 in the middle of the area, 79 in Big Spring, 81 in Snyder. And then we're going to continue to get a little bit warmer around 10 a.m. That's when our mat begins to get a little bit orange, increasing our temperatures at 81 degrees in Midland, Odessa, tying with Seminole, 83 tying with Big Spring and Snyder. So definitely not too bad whatsoever. Then our red comes on in. That means we're getting a bit hot around 5 p.m., 97 in Wake. And take a look at that. Some areas are in their triple digits. Pecos and in Presidio sitting at 100 degrees by 5 p.m. Really, Texas is going to continue to warm on up. Taking a look at that then we cool on down by the time we get into 11 p.m. for the area 84 in middle Odessa, 79 in Lubbock and then 90 degrees in the Dallas and Fort Worth area now it is going to be hot and taking a closer look at that 75 by 8 a.m. then we get into noon 87 a few clouds then 5 p.m. we will be sitting at 94 for a very warm day a couple heat tips for you guys drink plenty of water apply sunscreen regularly and take breaks in the shade it's gonna be hot really for all of the week, but the one thing that is going to potentially cool us down is that rain that we're going to see Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I'm smiling as I'm saying this around because it's been a while since we've had some rainfall in the area. So I'm si excited to hear some of the raindrops. I'm excited too for Mother Nature's car wash. Hopefully we get to see some of that water come down here. Yes. All right. Thanks a lot, Bridget. Here at ABC Big Two, we like to recognize our local first responders. Each month, we highlight a person and their service to the community. This month, we paid a visit to the Odessa Police Department to meet Detective Holly Hughes. You are this month's hometown hero. Because of that, we have something for you today that we want to give you. We wanted to give you a little certificate to get a free home house cleaning. Wow. On behalf of our local partner, Carpet Tech, we gave Detective Hughes a free floor and carpet cleaning. Detective Hughes has been with the Odessa Police Department for nine years. She hails from Canton, Ohio, and now works as a detective in the property unit. But Detective Hughes is also an instructor, teaching crisis intervention training. She is a negotiator and a polygraph examiner. Detective Hughes also spent time as a field training officer. But when I first moved out to Odessa, I thought, where's the grass? <laughs> um, but I didn't know a lot about it, you know. I, I came for the department because the opportunities that were here. Um, it's incredible, incredible department. And once I started to make contacts in the community and be able to serve the community, I see why it's such an incredible department because it has the support of the community. So I want to I wanna give back to those that, that helped me and give to those that come after me. Now, Detective Hughes wears many hats in the department, but on top of her many roles, she's also a big supporter of Western Wednesday. From boots to the buckle to the shirt and hat, it's a fun chance to dress the Texas way. Detective Hughes said she appreciates the support she receives from within the police department and the opportunities for growth. We thank her for her service to the Basin. And now, your ABC Big Two Sports. Over to sports now with ABC Big Two's Avi Cargloth. Hey, Avi. Hey, Rob. How's it hanging? It's well, good. <laughs> great to hear it. Well, the Astros and Rangers, they wrapped up their series this afternoon against a pair of AL Central opponents, the White Sox and Guardians. Both teams, Texas and Houston, they had chances today to clinch a series win, but they ran into different versions of trouble. Let's go to Cleveland between the Guardians and the Astros. Second inning, no score. Tristan McKenzie dealing for Cleveland. Alex Bregman, he goes down swing. Then Mauricio Dubon checks swing. They got him there. McKenzie then gets Jake Myers fishing. McKenzie, eight scoreless innings, eight strikeouts. This dude was unbelievable tonight. Luke Mele in the third inning hits it down the line. Alex Bregman, talk about unbelievable. Backhanded stop, throws to Trey Mancini for the one hopper out. Beautiful play as Bregman shows off his range in foul territory and still no score after the great play there. Owen Miller in the fourth. He grounds up the middle, and Aledmus Diaz, his turn to make a sliding stop with a quick throw, gets the out at first. We're still scoreless. Fifth inning, Luke Maley hits a deep fly ball to the left. That ball is gone. His first homer of the season, his first homer 
since 2019. And the Guardians take a 1-0 lead. We go to the ninth. Same score. Emmanuel Classe. He'll get Diaz to go chasing. And the Cleveland Guardians take this one. They get a series split, winning one to nothing. All right, Rangers and White Sox from Arlington. Second inning, no score. Runners at the corners, and that's A.J. Pollock ripping a single off of Spencer Howard. Josh Harrison scores. White Sox draw first blood. Third inning, Andrew Vaughn goes deep off Howard into the bullpen. A two-run shot, his 11th of the season. White Sox up. 3-0. It's a 3-1 game in the fourth here, but Luis Robert hits one just over the head of Adolis Garcia. That's a two RBI double. Lurie Garcia and Pollock score, and it's a 5-1 lead for the White Sox. Ninth inning, the Rangers trying to get something going. They're down 8-2, and they're on defense here. Lurie Garcia with a pop-up on the pitch. Nathaniel Lowe, play the game here, making the play in foul territory, bouncing off the netting, but he held on but the White Sox held on. It's 8-2 to two and the Rangers fall. All right, the Midland Rockhounds, they closed out their series in Arkansas this afternoon, edging the Travelers by just a run, 6-5. to five. Max Schumann drove in the winning run in the eighth. That scored Brett Harris. And after losing three of their first four in this series, Midland wins the final two games to earn the series split. Hounds, they now improved to 22-11 and 11 in the season's second half. That's the best record in the Texas League in the second half, that is. The Rockhounds, they stay on the road, and they head to Tulsa to start a series against the Drillers. That's Tuesday night at 7.05 p.m. All right, that does it for me in sports. Back over to you, Rob. Thanks a lot, Avi. And coming up tonight, a Hollywood actor gets picked for a role, but the casting choice is leaving other actors angry. The reason why, up next. It's the 50th anniversary four-day super sale at Furniture Row, and that means the more you buy, the more you save. Save a hundred bucks on every thousand you spend, plus 50 months no interest. But hurry, the 50th anniversary four-day super sale at Furniture Row ends Monday. Welcome back to our nation! ABC Tonight, every act <laughs> is a heartbreaker. Where are all the good men? They don't exist. Celebrity Family Feud, new ABC Tonight and stream on Hulu. If your floors look like this, then it's time to call West Texas Commercial Cleaning. Using one of the most advanced floor cleaners available, they'll make your floors shine. West Texas Commercial Cleaning. Let us bring your floors back to life. Aleve X. Its revolutionary rollerball design delivers fast, powerful, long-lasting pain relief. Aleve it and see what's possible. kids live alongside COVID, remember, they're safer when they're vaccinated against the virus. It'll help prevent long-term symptoms like weeks of exhaustion. It'll reduce the spread in schools and to your home. And it's been proven safe with millions of children already vaccinated. Talk to a medical provider today about keeping your kids up to date on their COVID vaccinations so they can play safe. Visit vaccinenm.org slash kids to get started. At Denver Mattress, we believe improving your sleep life should be easy and affordable. And during the anniversary four-day super sale to celebrate 50 years of Furniture Row, you'll save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend, plus 50 months no interest and free shipping. Denver Mattress, the easiest way to get the right mattress. Get ready for your day with meteorologist Ryan DePhillips. Trending now, there's cr casting criticism brewing in Hollywood tonight. In a new movie, actor James Franco has reportedly been cast as Cuban revolutionary Fidel Castro. Some Latino actors are speaking out, saying the role should have gone to a Latino person. Franco is set to star as Castro in the upcoming movie, Alina of Cuba, with production set to start later this year. The movie follows the life of Alina Fernandez, Castro's daughter. ABC's Phil Lipoff is here with more. 
actor James Franco embroiled in a heated social conversation spurred on by his latest role. I probably won't be making it into work today. <laughs> the Oscar-nominated actor. I am the only guy in the whole city that has it. And Pineapple Express star now cast to play Fidel Castro in Alina of Cuba, a film about the Cuban dictator's daughter, Alina Fernandez. The casting choice outraging some in the Latinx community and sparking conversations about race and casting in Hollywood. Roles for Latinos are already scarce in Hollywood. We don't get to see them very often. And when we do have an opportunity to play someone like a Fidel Castro, it is given to a white actor. Colombian-American actor John Leguizamo posting on Instagram, how is this still going on? How is Hollywood excluding us but stealing our narratives as well? No more appropriation, Hollywood and streamers. Boycott. I don't got a problem with Franco, but he ain't Latino. A producer of the upcoming film firing back at Leguizamo, telling The Hollywood Reporter he should move past himself and acknowledge that this story is about a Latin female immigrant living in America who is of historical importance. The View co-host Anna Navarro stepping in as well, tweeting, John Leguizamo is absolutely right. According to a 2020 study by the USC Annenberg Inclusion Initiative, Latino performers appearing in only 5% of speaking roles in 2019's Top 100 movies, despite being 18 percent of the total U.S. population. This is very disheartening and it continues this this perpetuation that Latinos are just disposable. We're not disposable. We're not invisible. We're here. Others criticizing the casting because of the allegations of sexual misconduct Franco faced four years ago. The actor settled a class action lawsuit last year while not admitting any wrongdoing. There were people that were upset with me and I needed to listen. That was Phil Lipoff reporting. Alina of Cuba is scheduled to start production August 15th. Franco is set to star alongside Anna Villafania, an actress and singer who played Gloria Estefan on Broadway. And coming up, one NFL team has recruited a new and unlikely player. On the turf, the boy scores big. It's a dream come true for him. We have this heartwarming story for you in just moments. Now is the time to enter your livestock and poultry for the Permian Basin Fair and Expo. Livestock entries must be postmarked by August 12th and poultry by August 22nd. Entry forms can be found online on the Livestock Events page at pbfair.com. Now known as one of the best law schools in America. It started out as a place where men were trained for the Christian ministry. This Ivy League university hasn't completely forgotten its roots. The intersection of Christianity and the law is just so important. How faith is still a part of college life at Harvard. It's been incredibly encouraging for me, uh, being involved with Christian Union and small group. On the 700 Club Monday, People say we're too set in our ways. This is Jesse. We've had it forever. We just prefer things the way they are. I'm giving him the usual. Oh, sweetie, you got a fax. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Change is overrated. Indeed. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if it is broke... We make do. I guess that's why we spend too much on energy every month. Don't be a holdover. Switch to Champion Energy where there's no surprise charges, no hidden fees, and you always get a fair price. Champion Energy. Head back to school in style with Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get up to 20% off Nike apparel, up to 30% off Adidas apparel, and get $39.99 hot deals on select footwear. Shop your store or academy.com. Deals end Sunday. With Choice Hotels, there's always a reason to book it. Whatever your reason, save up to 20% when you book over 7,100 locations at choicehotels.com. Now is the time to enter your livestock and poultry for the Permian Basin Fair and Expo. Livestock entries must be postmarked by August 12th and poultry by August 22nd. Entry forms can be found online on the Livestock Events page at pbfair.com. Finally tonight, a dream come true for a small running back named AJ, who got the chance to get on the field with the New York Jets and score big. Here's ABC's Lindsey Davis with this story. All eyes on number seven, AJ Trinidad. 
a tough little seven-year-old with a fighter spirit on and off the field, taking the ball right into the end zone. Last night, he was a special guest at the SNY Play Ball at the New York Jets Green and White Practice at MetLife Stadium. One of his dreams was to play in a big field, in a big football field. AJ has stage one cerebral palsy. As a result, this soon-to-be third grader from Bayonne, New Jersey, has been taking hits his entire life. And while his diagnosis might slow him down, he doesn't let it stop him. They open the door and he see he's actually in the, on the field where the players were. That for him, it just did it. He started jumping, you know, up and down with joy and everything. And this game was his time to shine in front of 11,000 fans, no less. Here's that moment again. The snap of the ball, the handoff. And that touchdown. Even getting to spike the ball. For AJ, it's a dream come true. His mother, Janice, right there, taking it all in. This is something that he will never forget. Having him run across that field like that, like he said, Mom, those are tears of joy. Overcome with emotion. What a sweet story. I'm starting to like the New York Jets. Nah, I'm joking. But that is such a heartwarming story. That was Lindsay Davis reporting. And coming up after the break, Bridget will have one last look at the forecast. Stay with us. At USAA, we've been called too exclusive. Because we only serve those who honorably serve. All ranks, all branches, and their eligible family members. Yep, that is exclusive. And we're fine with that. Optimum is here with award-winning internet to help you get closer and go farther, faster. Get speeds up to one gig with 99.9% .9 reliability. And smart Wi-Fi 6 for whole home coverage. Built-in security and no data caps to keep you moving. Get Optimum's award-winning internet for as low as $30 a month. Now at Optimum.com. Wonderful adventures are coming, it's true. And a bright future awaits only you. Raise your hand if you want to be a teacher. Allergy sufferers. Bedtime means it's time to take Zizol. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin, and on first dose, provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. Next Jeopardy. Look at those scores. Relive Cindy Zhang's close game. Let's make it a true daily double. And see how she earned a spot in the first ever Jeopardy second chance competition. Next Jeopardy. AMID is the Basin's first television station. From 1953 until now and beyond. We're always first, always accurate, and always proud to call the Basin home. Watch ABC Big 2 News. Let's take one last look at that seven-day forecast. Now, tomorrow is going to be the start of the school week for many kids in MISD. So, you know what? It's going to be nice and warm for you, sitting at 95 degrees. It is going to be a bit breezy with winds traveling 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then we're going to have four chances of some rain showers for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then here we come with that new weekend, sitting with some sunny suns. Thank you, Bridget. Now this is what I was looking for, buried treasure from a sunken Spanish shipwreck. Found in the Bahamas, jewels, medallions, and other artifacts were uncovered from the infamous 17th century Maravilla wreck. The ship sank in 1656 off the coast of the northern Bahamas. For hundreds of years, archaeologists and treasure seekers have been trying to find it. Now modern technology, including high resolution magnetometers and GPS systems have allowed unseen riches to come to the surface. The founder of Allen Exploration, which recovered the latest treasure trove, says they found about 25 gold coins along with emeralds, cannons, and Spanish olive jars. Now, Bridget, Avi, what would you guys do with that treasure? Oof. 
Well, first of all, make jewelry. Yeah, <laughs> as if we need another reason to go to the Bahamas. I mean. <laughs> That's like winning the lottery ticket right there while you're in paradise. I don't know, man. I was, I was going to pawn it off for some golf clubs. I don't, I don't know. know. I'd keep it and, you know, save out. some of that history for the kids or something. Put it in a museum. Yeah. Indiana Jones route. Yeah. yeah give it back to whoever yeah. had it, I guess. Yeah, the noble club. Uh, pretty stuff. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for news. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you here tomorrow at 5 a.m. for a good morning base. Good night.